today. Please join me as I go to the 2023 Shanghai Auto Show and we are going to see a lot of electric cars. Um, it's going to be really busy and uh, we'll just see how it goes. I'll try and give you a general overview of the, uh, of the building and the event rather than focus on all of the nitty gritty details which uh, there are many more uh, channels that do that in great detail here on YouTube. So as ever, line one, line nine, line 11. Do we rush and try and make it? I think I can. La, 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 la. It's very busy. Oh, there's a map. Uh, right, so uh, Xu Way, two stations north. And then all the way out on line two to East Shushi, which is where the uh, convention centre is. And there's a train. Can I catch it again? <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, lucky twice. <laughs> Something tells me I should have got up earlier today. <laughs> So there's the exhibition halls, I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but it's basically in the design of like a four-leafed clover. You can see the people behind all streaming in. Oh, right, so there you can see the layout of the building. So you've got these kind of four leaves and then each one has got two... Oh, it's gone. <laughs> that was just a face ID entry. I was straight through. So like I was saying, the convention hall is split into this four-leaf clover design where you've got these four leaves and then each is split into two. Look at that lovely open space, okay? That'll probably be the only time that we see this today. <laughs> so here we are on the uh, Audi stand. You can see there are some electrics, so there's the Q5 e-tron. But generally speaking here at Audi, it's all still ice, so the internal combustion engine. There's a little bit more of the Audi Q5 e-tron. Now what uh, Volkswagen are doing is something kind of a little bit different and they're focusing on this ID series. You can see we've got ID3, 4, 6 and 7. Now the ID7 only launched, I think, something like two days ago. And it was like a, a multi-location launch in Berlin, uh, Paris, uh, various places including this show. Now you can see it's starting to get busy already, but uh, drawing some attention. The ID7, let's see if I can get a, some view of it. Now the uh, reports are that uh, a large number of uh, German executive came over from Europe to this show. This is a a uh, brand called Hongqi. It's, uh, it's a quite an old Chinese brand and they made these classic black sedans in the past and they always have this kind of signature uh, you know, rib along the bonnet which I think looks quite stylish. I think something we'll see a lot of today is a lot of other vloggers and bloggers. You can see she's getting quite, quite animated about that. I guess I'm in the same game. So still on the Hongqi stand, here's a concept car. I imagine there's going to be loads. Here we are entering Hall 6. I can see Xpeng in the distance. Oh, and here we have Neo and Zika. Right, now we're getting serious on the Chinese EVs. Look how busy the Neo stand is already. And they have an absolute plethora of cars. I'll go into that a little bit more in detail in a minute. A little bit more about the halls themselves. Like I said, 16, 28,000 square meters per exhibition hall which gives the overall location something like uh, 400,000 square meters inside with an extra 100,000 outside. Right, let's go and look at all the noise at Link and Co. to try and give you a little bit of an idea about the various brands that we've got growing up here in China. So this is Neo with this kind of symbol that they use here. Loads of cars. Now what they're trying to do really is place themselves as being 
you know, quite a high quality brand, you know, a little bit more expensive. One of the new cars that they've got out is the ET7, which is this car here, looks quite nice. Um, relatively expensive, it's around about 450,000 RMB, so I guess you're talking around about uh, 50,000 pounds, I'll use pounds. Um, but yes, it's certainly one of their new ones and it's got a very large range, um, say, stating something like a thousand NEDC uh, kilometres. Not, might not necessarily get that in reality and a 150 kilowatt battery he says looking at his notes and probably getting stuff wrong but I think that's quite a nice one other things that they're doing at the Neo stand by the way absolutely loads of Neo people all of the blue suits are, are Neo staff and there's about two per car it's unbelievable they've got this kind of concept as well they call it the Neo house they're trying to go for um, you know, full-on lifestyle branding as well. So you can see all of the uh, all of the merch going on as well. So what they're also doing is relaunching the ES6 and the ES8. I guess that's what they are showing there. I don't know what they've changed on the cars. That's a detail. And again, look at the blue suit. Bang, 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 bang. And here we've got some of the people much more pro than me. Shanghai famously has the most coffee shops in any city in the world, and here's an extra one. Come all of the way to the auto show, get yourself a coffee. Okay, who else do we have? We've got Zika over here. So there's the 001, which is uh, one of the original cars. I'll probably put a link on the screen to uh, Elliot's fully charged uh, review of that car. Sorry, there's a whole load of people all over it. But what's new here is the... Um, is the 009. This is their new car. You can see it's uh, been cordoned off. Here's the other new car from Zika, the Zika X. Again, you can see it's all cordoned off and popular. Everything here is electric, by the way. I mean, I know I haven't said that, but you know, everything in this entire hall is probably electric uh, on the China stands. And uh, Zika has a coffee shop as well. So there's some more filming going on, and here we are on the Exxon stand. And we've got Gordon Hayward in the background. Okay, and let's look at one good picture. We turn this Famous basketball player here from the NBA. So if you follow Elliot, you'll know that he drives an Exxon G3, and he's uh, often favoured the P7. It's a real nice car, it's kind of a Tesla uh, competitor. But this is the new car on the stand here, and that's the G6. interesting to see the China brand is using China branded uh, headsets as well. These are HTC focuses, I think. I'll uh, let you be the judge of the, the styling on that and also the colour choice. I'd call that kind of, uh, what, um, milky coffee? Spilt, spilt milky coffee. There you go. So this is the, I think it's the high can stand. There's some more video work going on. I think that's Nita over there and we've got Lee over there. Okay, so the Chinese electric car brands just keep coming. Nice bit of security detail as well. So you need to be careful with the English names for some of these companies. So you can see we are in fact on the Neta or Nita stand, but actually all of the branding is in Chinese. So we've got a symbol and then the Chinese characters, okay? So it is Neta or Nita. Uh, let's call the whole thing off. There you can see again, all electrics. There's a frunk for you. Yeah, this is the GT. And there's in fact a convertible here as well. Pretty stylish, but yeah, that's the that's the GT. Neta Nita S. So there's 
is the Lee stand, and as I understand it, Lee are kind of positioning themselves in competition to Neo, so going a little bit more uh, you know, luxury end of things. Looks like they're pushing the L9. So yet another Chinese brand, this is Aura. They have this kind of unique brand, it's all a little bit lighter and pastel shades, etc. I think that's the Cat, which is uh, launched in the UK, goes for something like £31,000, probably overpriced. I'll put a link in to Robert Llewellyn's uh, review of it, somewhere on the screen now. And here's another one, I don't know the name of this car, but it obviously has a, a very much a classic and we've got uh, you know, yet more professional videography going on. Some review of the car that we've got here. So here we are going between Hall 6 and 7. Looks like the sun came out. I thought it was going to be a horrible grey old day all day today. I was kind of hoping for it because I know I'm going to be indoors all day. Big love for Mini. Right, so it's quite interesting nowadays. You kind of even have to just double check. Right, so that's a, a gasoline car. It's an internal combustion engine. Surprising, they're actually becoming quite rare. But here we still have some. hydrogen fuel cells. There's the uh, BMW hydrogen fuel cell iX5 car which is really interesting to see. Uh, classically it's been only things like the Toyota Mirai that have been in the hydrogen space and it opens a big debate about what will be the, uh, the energy of the future. There's the i3 which is a battery electric car and then on to the more luxurious i7 over here. I think the, uh, the current trend is for cars to be battery and hydrogen might end up having much more use in the large commercial vehicle space due to the, uh, the weight of the batteries. This is the i7 again, it's getting a lot of attention. getting a lot of attention. So there's the iX and it's got some interesting stats actually. So we've got 640 kilometers CLTC, that's the Chinese standard, and at 0 to 100 kilometers now of 3.8. So it goes pretty quick. So here we have BYD. Build your dreams. Now this should be a pretty busy stand. Noisy too. for you um, probably in size order so this is the smallest one this is the seagull I think this is also the newest uh, I know that Elliot has not reviewed this yet and he's trying to so you can see how popular it is so that's the seagull you can kind of see this aquatic theme in the background what we've then got here behind us busy stand is this is the dolphin um, this certainly has had a review from Elliot about a year ago I think I'll try and put a link in somewhere but you can see that's kind of the next size up of the car that they have. Uh, I might have some stats on that one. Let's see the Dolphin, it costs 93,000 RMB, has up to 400 kilometer NEDC range and the battery goes up to around about 45 kilowatt hours. And then the next one we have is this one, it's the Seal. This has been quite popular as well, it's got famously this uh, styling at the back here, this this quite uh, interesting styling there, it makes it quite famous. I see a lot of people touching that. So the seal, let's see, what have we got for this one? It's about up to 290,000 RMB. Uh, it has up to 700 kilometers of CLDC range. That's the Chinese uh, version of how far the range will extend to. Okay. So significantly more expensive than the Dolphin. And then the next 
far along is, I think this is the palm, so this is more of the uh, sedan style, I guess, and it's going away from the aquatic theme, but uh, it is uh, an interesting car nevertheless. So I know I haven't been doing many of the interiors, and that's just because the, the cars are busy, busy, but uh, there's at least inside the Dolphin. Another shot of the uh, seagull here to show you how popular it is. I mean, it's getting absolutely swamped. And still with BYD, but this is another one. I think that's called the Song. I think this one's called the Destroyer. <laughs> this is the Yuan Plus, uh, or it's actually branded the Atto 3. And the interesting thing about this car is it's uh, one of the first to really try to break it into Australia. Australia's been classically a, a difficult market, as I understand it, and it's got something to do with, um, I don't know, legislation or something like that. So some stats on this car, let's see, it's uh, got up to 420 kilometres of WLTP range. WLTP is the new standard that's coming in. I forget exactly what it means, but I'll tell you later uh, or on the screen. And it's got up to a 60 kilowatt battery. But that's interesting because it's really trying to break it into the Australian and international markets. It's been reviewed before by Fully Charged and they quite liked it uh, because it was nice, simple and practical. So there you can see a general overview of the BYD stand. Lots of different models, lots of different sizes and this kind of ocean theme that they're going for at the moment. You know, something that BYD have, which is a little bit unique, is this kind of blade battery system that they use, which is supposedly much safer than a lot of other uh, battery designs, and it passes various nail puncture tests, etc. And apparently they've been in batteries and they're vertically integrated on manufacturing, but even into mobile phones. So they say that one in every five mobile phones has a BYD battery in it. So we're still in Hall 7. I can't get onto every stand, but there's a uh, Haval i5. It's got a very Aston Martin feel to that badge, hasn't it? So that's the H9. And then there's the, there's the name there, Yuan Jack. I believe this brand is poor, but uh, they're going for a more of a utility kind of market. Ah, so poor were linked to the Haval stand, so I guess it's a sub-brand of Haval looking into the different market space in the utility sector. That's Hall 7 done, off to Hall 8. Hall 8 is the much more luxury brand area, so here we, here we have Maserati. There's something a bit different for you, Armadillo. It's actually uh, an RV, so you can see the side actually flips down and you've got your little patio there as well. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a lot of tons, quite a lot of tons to take out into the countryside. Here we are on the Harley Davidson stand and I don't see a live wire. I think it's relatively new and there aren't many around. That's probably uh, the reason for it. Somebody's got some confidence. Here we have more motorbikes. So we've got the Honda. So that's the Honda stand. Nothing electric in sight on that stand. Here we are on the Ducati stand. Just have a quick look at some of these. Not going to go into any details. This is actually the Yangwan uh, stand and what they've got is the U8 and the U9 vehicles and they're both around about a million RMB so quite expensive cars but you can see how incredibly popular. <laughs> so that's the U9. It's famously known as the jumping car. It's got this new BYD developed uh, D-Sus. I think it's dynamic suspension. And it's got the D-Sus X, which I'm not really sure what it is, but everybody's assuming that it's hydraulic. And then we've got the U8 over here, which is kind of the off-road vehicle. It's got four independent motors in it, and it can go very deep into water. It's all got 
protection on the battery, etc. I mean, this is probably going to be the most successful Chinese supercar, hypercar, whatever you want to call it. So look out for that. So that's the U9. I didn't explain myself very well on the jumping car. So the U9 that has been used by Yangwan, which is the premium brand of BYD, to show off the dynamic suspension system that they've developed. Uh, in that car, it's called the DSUS X. We believe it's hydraulic. And basically the car, there's a video, the car lowers itself down and then jumps up and actually lifts all four wheels off the ground. And that's what's become this famous jumping car. I actually see quite a lot of Bentleys on the uh, on the streets here in in Shanghai. Probably the last before lunch is Lotus. This is the interesting car, which is the Electra, and we saw this in the local shopping mall near me, which is Gangwei or Grand Gateway, uh, together with Elliot, and they basically said, "We've got one in the basement. If you've got your driving license on you, you can go drive it," uh, and we didn't. So we didn't, which is a shame, but I'll probably go back to that place and, and take it out for a spin. Lotus uh, really going on their, their history for the brand, which is fine by me. Looks pretty good. We've got Nigel Mansell there. There's another noisy stand, that's uh, Way. Here we are still on our way stand and there's some more video reviews going on. There's Avatar and there's another one, uh, Voya, I think. This brand is called Genesis. I'm not sure of this brand's overall name, but this truck is the M Hero with the tagline of Never Back Down. Something interesting has happened to this Lexus. So yeah, here we have the Lexus stand. Obviously uh, going for very high quality. There we've got the Volvo stand over there. And if we come around, we've got a sister brand to Volvo, which is Polestar. They're all part of the Gili group. And what we've got here is the Polestar 3 and the Polestar 4. The 4 is uh, definitely a new uh, launch. I think it might be launched here. Uh, I know Elliot's done a video. I don't know if it's been released yet, but certainly that'll be coming and I'll stick a link into that one here. So it's definitely a different stand design. One of the things that's being noted by uh, many people on the Polestar 4 is that uh, that rear, there's actually no rear window at all, but what they have is a um, video screen that replaces the rear view mirror. Uh, and with a button press, it goes uh, reflective and you can see your children, etc. So uh, apparently it's a safety feature and it gives much better views at night uh, of the road behind you. Jaguar F-Type at 700,000 RMB. Certainly not cheap, but very nice car. So, of course, we have some electric cars. I think Jaguar Land Rover were generally a little bit slow off the pace on electric development, but uh, they are coming. There's the Defender at 1.7 million RMB. Lincoln, another luxury brand. Here we are right in the centre of the four-leaf clover design. There's the sky up there and we've got hall one over there and then it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven and all the way back to eight over there. I'm pretty much done for the day. I've been to all of the main halls, including some that you didn't see, like components, etc. So now it's a case of trying to find the metro, which I think is this way. Right, so I think I'm done for today. There's the middle of the uh, overall conference center. I did about 17 and a half thousand steps, which is embarrassingly small. I thought it was going to be way over 20. Uh, what did we learn today? Loads of focus on new energy vehicles, particularly battery, particularly China manufacture. Loads of stuff coming out of China. There are others as well. Almost every manufacturer has got something. We saw the BMW, we saw Volvo, and we saw many of the traditional manufacturers you know, moving over into that space. Hydrogen was evident in some of the truck solutions, which was in the component supply area, which I didn't video any of, but there was tanks 
and uh, valve systems and fuel cells there, but mainly focused on the, the large vehicles. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll probably be a little bit of outtakes on the Metro from, from now uh, as I get on to line two, which is just over here in the distance.